we have started to deal with the problem of lattice planes and directions in the previous lecture. Actually, you have seen that the orientation of the lattice planes or crystal <coughs> planes in a crystal is determined by a set of three indices which are called Miller indices. And uh, we have already discussed the concept of these Miller indices in the first part of this lecture. Actually, in continuation of the lecture on Miller indices, this is the second part of the same problem. And uh, in this uh, second part of the lecture on <coughs> lattice planes and directions, we will see how to determine the different directions in a crystal lattice. Actually, you know, the specification of planes and directions in a crystal is a very important problem because the most of the physical properties of a crystal uh, depends on directions. Uh, it means the property is different in different directions and in other words, you say that the most of the physical properties of uh, solids or crystals are anisotropic. And so it becomes very important to define the direction, uh, different directions in a crystal so that we can discuss the different uh, properties, uh, anisotropic properties of a crystal. Okay. And uh, as you have seen in the first part of the lecture, uh, how we can determine the orientation of a crystal plane by the help of Miller indices. Now in this second part of the lecture, we are going to see uh, how to determine the different directions in a crystal lattice. Okay. Actually, the direction of a line in a lattice is defined by assigning certain indices to this line. And if this line passes through the origin, its indices are determined by taking a point on this line and finding out the projection of the vector drawn from the origin to that point on the crystallographic axis. You can see I have shown here at the three crystallographic axes. These are OX, OY and OZ. And let us consider there is a line uh, OQ. As you can see in this figure, I have considered a line OQ. Okay. Now, if our problem is to determine the direction of this line OQ, you can take any uh, point on this line, as I have shown in this figure, there are two, I have considered two points, one is P and another is Q. Okay. And uh, origin has been taken at this point O. So we will join simply that very point to the origin and we will determine the coordinates of that point. For example, if you want to find the uh, coordinates of point P and say these are U, V, W, how you can find it? You know, we will simply find the projection or the components of the vector OP along the three crystallographic axes. As in this figure you can see if your aim is to find the coordinates of this point P, we will simply draw a perpendicular on this xy plane if you consider that this uh, is just a uh, cubic crystal. And uh, then we will join this point A where the perpendicular falls on the xy plane with the origin O. Okay. Now again, we will draw a line AB parallel to Y axis, which will be definitely perpendicular to this uh, X axis. This angle is 90 degree. And then this OB is the projection of vector OP, OP along X direction. Okay. So OB is equal to U. OB is equal to U. Okay. Again, we will draw a line AC parallel to X axis, which will become perpendicular to the Y axis. And this projection OC is the projection of the vector OP 
along y-axis. And in the similar manner, when you will draw a line PD, see the figure, parallel to OA, this line will be perpendicular to this z-axis, which is third crystallographic axis. And then this OD is the measure of the projection of vector OP along z, the third crystallographic axis, that is along the axis OZ. So in this way, finding the projection of this vector OP along the three crystallographic axis, you can determine uh, what, are the, uh, what are the coordinates of this point P. Okay? And I have shown in this figure that these, these coordinates are U, V, W. As a, a proper example, let us consider that uh, the coordinates of this point P are, let us say, 1 by 2, 1 by 2, and 1 by 2. It means you are taking u equal to 1 by 2, v equal to 1 by 2, and uh, w is also equal to 1 by 2. And in a similar manner, you can take that uh, the coordinates of this point q are 1, 1, and 1. Let us say. Then how we will determine the direction uh, oq? Actually, after getting the coordinates of this point P or Q, we will simplify the coordinates. So, if it is fractional, as you can see the coordinates of point P are fractional, then it needs simplification. You have to take again LCD as you have taken in case of Miller indices. And LCD means you have to take the LCM of denominators. Since the denominators are 2, 2, and 2. So, LCD will be what? LCD will be simply equal to 2. Now, we will multiply these coordinates, that is 1 by 2 by the LCD, that will be 1, okay? Again, the second coordinate is 1 by 2, so we will multiply 1 by 2 by the LCD 2, and this will be also 1. And third one is also 1 by 2 into 2, and that will be equal to 1. So in that, this way, after simplifying by taking the LCD and uh, multiplying the LCD to the coordinates, we get the, uh, the integers of a smallest integers which will have a smallest ratio and uh, that will represent actually the <coughs> three integers which will represent the direction. So in this way, uh, you can say that uh, the direction of OQ will be represented like this. This is actually written inside a square bracket. As you have seen, the Miller indices are written inside, not inside the, uh, that is uh, written inside a regular bracket. But these three indices will be written inside a, a square bracket. So this uh, is the this set of three integers 1 1 1 inside a square bracket represents the direction OQ. Okay. Actually, the same uh, <coughs> are the indices for any other direction parallel to OQ because by shifting the origin to an appropriate position, the new direction can be made to pass through the point OPQ. Okay. So if uh, we consider for an example that there is a direction, let us say, like this, then we will shift this origin, let us say, at point O dash, and uh, if it is a uh, point R, but this o, R, o dash R is parallel to OQ, then for uh, this direction too, the three integers will be 1, 1, and 1. So any direction which you determine is not unique, but all the directions parallel to that direction will have the same indices. Okay, but uh, remember these are not called Miller indices, uh, <coughs> so it is written inside the square bracket. Okay. Now, uh, as you know, if we actually all these facts which I have just explained uh, have been 
mentioned here and you can see uh, that uh, I have <coughs> written all those facts for your convenience as I have so you can see these coordinates are simplified to get a set of a smallest possible integers which when enclosed in a square bracket represent the indices of the line okay for example uh, to determine the indices of the direction OQ in a cubic crystal we may take either point P whose coordinates are 1 by 2 1 by 2 and 1 by 2 or the other point Q whose coordinates are 1 1 1 on this line either of these points yields the indices of the direction OQ like this so I have explained how we can determine the direction and I have also written here for your convenience so that you will have a good notes because many of you always ask me to provide PDF but there is no need of PDF as you can see all those things which you will get in a PDF notes that is provided here okay now uh, as you know if uh, there is a direction let us say let us say this direction is OA okay and uh, you have to find the coordinates of these points okay let us say this is x axis this is y axis and we take the z axis perpendicular to this plane as I have marked here by a, a, enclosing a small point inside a, a, a circle this represents actually a direction which will be perpendicular to this x y plane then you know the projection of this vector OA along uh, OX will be a will be OB and that the projection of OA along OY will be OC okay so this OB represents the projection of OA along OX and OC represents its projection along Y axis but if you will draw a perpendicular from A on this Z axis which is perpendicular to this plane what will be the projection you know the projection will be just zero as you know the component or projection of any vector in a direction perpendicular to that vector that is always zero so definitely if a direction is perpendicular to a certain axis its index corresponding to that axis will be zero okay so i have mentioned it here you can see if a direction is perpendicular to certain axis its index corresponding to that axis is zero okay now it is also possible that uh, uh, the projection of uh, the vector will be in negative side of the axis for example if you consider that this is your x axis okay and this is your y axis okay and z axis is perpendicular to this which I am marking here by this small circle and if the vector is along this direction let us say OA okay then you can see the projection of this vector OA uh, along the x axis will be in the negative side so its projection uh, in this case will be negative x projection will be negative and corresponding to that negative projection we will write the in <coughs> the indices will be negative and we write it by writing a sign of bar over it okay so i have mentioned it here you can see the direction having projection on negative sides of the axis passes negative uh, passes negative indices which are written by putting bars over the indices as we have done in case of mirror indices too so whenever there will be the negative projection negative integer that will be marked by writing a sign of bar over the index okay now uh, let us see uh, this figure 
I am just showing you a, this figure. See here. Actually, <coughs> here the origin O has been. Let us say we have to find the direction of this line AB, which is actually the diagonal of this a face of this uh, uh, cubic crystal. Okay, or cubic lattice. So, if your aim is to find the direction of this AB, how you will actually determine its direction? Actually, for this, we will simply shift the origin O from the point O to A. So, origin will be shifted to A. And then, we will determine the coordinates of this point uh, uh, <coughs> B. Actually, when you will... Uh, shift the origin uh, to this point A then coordinates of this point B will be minus 1 1 and 0 because as you can see this is lying in xy plane so z axis that is the axis along this vector C will be perpendicular to this let us say this is point D. As you can see the direction OC which represents one of the crystallographic axis that is perpendicular to the plane uh, plane OADB o -A -D -B. So this line OC will be perpendicular to the direction OB and so as you have learned the projection of this direction, this vector OB along OC or along you can say uh, this is E, along e, uh, AE, you can say this direction will be also C and so the projection along this AE of this direction AB will be 0, okay. And so I have written the coordinates of this point P as minus 1, 1 and 0 okay so what will be actually the indices which will represent this direction you know this direction will be then written inside a square bracket by taking a sign of bar over 1 for this minus sign and 1 and 0 so this direction AB which is actually the diagonal of the crystal plane OADB that is represented by <coughs> the indices 1 bar G1 and 0 inside this square bracket. Okay. Now let us see. <coughs> now see this figure. If we <clears throat> we consider the origin at this point O. We have considered actually a cubic crystal in this figure. And uh, our aim is now to determine the directions along the edges and the different diagonals of this uh, uh, cubic lattice. Okay. As you have already seen how we can write the different uh, <coughs> diagonals of the faces of the cube as uh, you can see I have mentioned it here that uh, you can see the <coughs> the faces diagonals as uh, you can see the faces diagonal will be will always contain the indices always contain the indices 1 1 0 sometimes it will be 0 1 1 sometimes it will be 1 <coughs> 1 0 sometimes it will be 1 bar 1 0 sometimes it will be 0 0 1 bar 0 and so on okay Actually, the family of face diagonals are represented like this. This is 1, 1, 0 inside a angular bracket. Okay. 
सो इफ यू वॉन्ट टू रिप्रेजेंट द डायरेक्शन अलॉन्ग द फेस डायगोनल्स ऑफ ए क्यूबिक क्रिस्टल मार्क दिस दिस इज फॉर क्यूबिक क्रिस्टल देन दो देन द फैमिली ऑफ द फेस डायगोनल्स विल बी रिप्रेजेंटेड बाय दिस सिम्बॉल इन वी विल राइट वन वन जीरो इन साइड दिस एंगुलर ब्रैकेट ओके नाउ लेट एस सी इफ यू टेक ओरिजिन एट दिस पॉइंट ओ and uh, we have shown in this figure this is a, just a unit cell of a cubic crystal then the coordinates of this point a will be what this will be 1 0 0 because it will be along the let us say this is x axis this is y axis and this is z axis it means these are the three crystallographic axes so O A line lies along the crystallographic axis O, o X, and so its uh, the coordinates of this point A will be one zero zero, okay, and so this direction O A will be marked by one zero zero inside this square bracket, okay. Similarly, <coughs> you can see if we talk about this point C. this oc direction is also again along an edge of this uh, <coughs> cubic lattice and uh, coordinates of this point will be what that will be 0 0 and 1 so the indices which will represent the direction oc that will be written as 0 0 1 inside this square bracket and in a similar manner if you want to write the <coughs> the indices for this direction ob since this direction lies on uh, again along one of the edges of this cube and its coordinates you can see will be what its coordinate the coordinates of this point b will be 0 1 0 so the indices representing this direction ob will be written as Zero one zero inside this square bracket. You can see. In the similar manner, uh, you can write the uh, indices for the other edges of the cube, and uh, definitely, whenever you will write the indices for uh, the the direction of any edge of the cube, definitely there will be three index. One zero zero. One zero zero. <coughs> never there will be one one zero or one one one. This or uh, never this will be zero zero zero. It will be always one zero zero. As you can see, for the direction O A, it is one zero zero. For direction O C, this is zero zero one, and for direction O B, this is zero one zero. so this family of the uh, <coughs> edges of a cubic crystal the direction for this family of edges that is represented again inside the angular bracket writing the indices 1 0 0 so this uh, symbol represents the family of the edges of a cubic crystal okay as i have marked it here you can see the edges of the cube are represented by the indices of the type uh, 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 1/0 and these constitute a family of cube edges designated like this this is written inside the angular bracket okay now see uh, the body diagonal of this cubic lattice this body diagonal is what this is in fact this of and you can see the coordinates of this point f uh, taking the origin at o will be what these coordinates are 1 1 and 1 okay you may also take 2 2 and 2 you may also take 3 3 and 3 you may also take 1 by 4 1 by 4 1 by 4 
but after simplification you will always get 111 so when you are talking about the coordinates that may be fractional but uh, all the three coordinates will be equal because this is a cubic crystal so the side length of, uh, so the each face has equal length so if the lengths are 2 2 2 then coordinates will be 2 2 2 if the lengths of the edges are 3 3 3 then the the coordinates will be 3 3 3 or if they are 1 by 4 1 by 4 1 by 4 then coordinates will be 1 by 4 1 by 4 1 by 4 but after simplification you will always get the smallest num integers 1 1 1 so you can say that the body diagonal of will be represented by <coughs> writing the indices 1 1 1 inside this square bracket as i have mentioned it here so this sorry this 1 1 1 represents the direction of body diagonal of okay uh, actually i have also marked it here you can see the body diagonals is represented like this <coughs> this is the fam this represents the family of body diagonals okay so you can take the body diagonals along of we can also take the body diagonals in other directions so all the body diagonals that is the family of body diagonals are represented by Like, represented like this okay now uh, i am uh, providing you a very important formula which is very helpful in solving the problem if you uh, have two directions let us say we have two directions uh, one direction is represented by writing uh, the indices h k l this is one of the direction and there is another direction let us say this direction and it is represented by the indices h dash k dash l dash okay these are the two directions and let us consider the angle between these two directions is theta then how this theta will be determined actually the angle between these two directions represented by hk l h dash k dash l dash that is determined by using this very important formula you should remember it actually the cosine of this angle theta that is cos theta is given by h h dash plus k k dash plus l l dash over a square root of h square plus k square plus l square times a square root of sorry <coughs> a square root of h dash square plus k dash square plus l dash square so remember this formula for finding the angle between the two crystal crystallographic directions which are represented by hkl and h dash k dash l dash okay so this is all about the different directions how we can determine the different directions in a crystal and i hope this was a very easy and simple concept but that this is very useful in the uh, <coughs> in the discussion of the crystal structure so must watch the video seriously write down all these things in your notebook as i always i i told you that uh, that will be actually a very good notes for your examination okay thank you very much